Hello everyone, and welcome to Lone Wolf Book 3, The Caverns of Kalte, or Kalt, or Kalt, whatever. I say Kalte. Last we left off, we were vaporizing people with the Summer Sword, which we still have. We have all these lovely special items. We have a meal and a potion. <laughs> uh, we have a dagger and a short sword. We have various stats. That's my stats. Let me see. I'm plus 8 from the Summer Sword. And then plus four from Mind Blast and the Shield. Okay, so that's right. Endurance is plus two from my helmet. Okay. In the Northern Land of Summerland, uh, kids were trained to be Kai. Okay. You fought your way to Holmgard. Your mission was fraught with great danger, for Summerland had been betrayed by one of its own magicians, Vonatar the traitor. Well, hell, they should have known guy with a name like that. His agents sought to kill you at every opportunity, but your skill and strength defeated their evil aims. You returned to Holmgard at the head of a great fleet, the allies of Durinor, and destroyed the Dark Lord army that besieged the capital. Much of Summerland was ruined by the war. The rich farmlands were laid waste, and many towns were razed to the ground. But the Sunderlanding are a tough people, and were undaunted by the enormous task that lay ahead. They set about the rebuilding of war-torn Summerland with such determination that now, one year later, few of the scars of war remain visible. For the crucial part that you played in the victory, the king has bestowed upon you the rank and title of Freyarl of Summerland, a rare honor for one so young. The ruins of the Kai Monastery and much of the surrounding lands are now Freyland under your protection. Work to rebuild the monastery was just about to commence when disturbing news from the north prompted the king to summon you to the capital. Many merchants returning from the summer trading expeditions to Kalte told of the fall of Brumalark, the leader of the Ice Barbarians. The description of a hunchbacked magi magician who has succeeded the fierce Brumalark, Brumalmark fits only one man, Vonatar the Traitor. After the defeat of the Darklands, Vonatar escaped to the frozen wastes of Kalte. He made his way to the ice fortress Achaea, where, through deception, he tricked the cruel Brumalmark. Brumalmark. There can be a lot of silly names in this one into adopting him as his magician. It was a mistake that was to cost the leader his fortress and his life. The news that Vonatar still lives spreads like wildfire through Summerland. Thousands of Summerlandings surround the capital and demand Vonatar be made to pay for his treachery. So great is their outcry that the king is obliged to promise that the evil traitor will be brought back to Holmgard and made to stand trial for his crimes. For you, Lone Wolf, the king's promise is the start of a quest that will pitch you against a hated foe deep within the hostile caverns of Kalte. Um, use the action chart. Let's see, we can have a new Kai discipline. Okay. I think we're going to take Mind Shield, because there are some good... It's gonna suck in there. Mind Shield! No points lost when attacked by Mind Blast. We're also a Kai Guardian. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And before leaving the northern part of Anskivin, you were escorted to the city hall and equipped with special winter boots, a tunic, and fur-lined cloak and mittens. You're given a map of Kalte and a pouch of gold. Let's see. I know we need the gold since the rats stole all our money. Um, action number chart thingy. We found they gave us a pouch of six gold. Whatever. I don't think we're gonna need too much gold up there. Before you set out, you're given the choice of the following items. In addition to those you already possess, you may take any two of the following. Plus two hit points. It's not bad. Another Lomsper potion. A meal. Not a bad idea. It's going to be hard to hunt up there. It seems a shame to waste that on a meal. I think we'll get a padded waistcoat. I like collecting special items. <laughs> okay, and we'll get... Uh, we'll go ahead and get a meal. Okay. Let's save. 
Okay, and equipment, food, weapons, yeah, 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 okay. Combat, right, levels of Kai training. Kai Wisdom, your mission will be fought in great danger. Da, 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 da. There are many routes to the Ice Fortress of Ikea, but only one will enable you to capture Vonatar and return to Summerlin with the minimum of danger. Okay, the betrayal of your country can be avenged by bringing the, trust, the traitor to justice. Section 1. Even before you accepted the task of bringing Vonatar to justice, preparations were being made for your voyage to Calte. The captain of the summer lending warship Cardonal, having returned from a long Calter Sea patrol... Oh, speaking of, here's Calte. Oh, I should click on that. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So, there's the Calter Sea. There's Anxgiven. And then south is more of uh, Summerland. That's what the Ice Fortress looks like. It's Cloudmaker Mountain, which is here. And you're going to have to get from here to here, which is going to suck. Okay, one second. Okay, so the captain returned from his patrol and was ordered to wait at Anskiven. During the night, food, ice equipment, and canoe dog teams were taken on board. The mission was highly secretive. Only senior members of the crew were told the true nature of the voyage that lay ahead. The plan is to set you ashore at Hallier Bluff, drop anchor, and await your return. I don't see that anywhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. An elite team of trusted guides will lead you from the bluff to Achaea. Once inside the Ice Fortress, you are to hunt down and capture Vonatar, and then return with your guides to the ship. Your mission must be accomplished within 30 days at most, for winter is closing in, and no ship can withstand the grip of the Calte Ice pack ice. If you do not return within time, the captain will be forced to set sail without you. That's bad. For six days, the Cardonal sails across the stormy Calter Sea without running into a storm, but every day the temperature steadily drops until a layer of ice covers the decks. On the morning of the seventh day, the snow-capped island of Tola is sighted on the horizon. Soon after, a light wind rises from the west. At first, there appears to be little danger, but within half an hour, a furious blizzard is blowing, and all sight of land quickly vanishes in the scudding drift. All day, all day the furious gale rages. Tremendous winds slice the tops of the huge gray waves, and water crashes over the decks masts and rigging of the ship freezing almost immediately into solid ice. The side of the ship becomes several feet thick with seawater, and it's not until early evening that the weather clears, and all the wind still blows strongly, the force of the gale has been spent. You are soon to discover that the gale has blown the ship nearly 30 miles off course, along the lip of the Lyuk ice shelf. You know that to return to Haye Bluff would waste a precious day, so you decide to land on the ice shelf and start your mission from there. So it pushed us way the hell down here. Okay. Uh, at la As the last of the canoe dogs are carried ashore, your guides tell you of two possible routes to Achaea from here. The first route involves a 130-mile trek to Cloudmaker Mountain, and then, following the difficult terrain of the Viad Glacier, a further 100 miles must be covered before you arrive at the Ice Fortress. The alternative route involves a longer journey of nearly 180 miles into the Hrod Basin followed by a trek of a hundred miles through Storm Giant Pass to Ikea. Even if the weather and your luck hold, either route will involve at least ten days hard trekking before you reach your goal. So we have a mountain path, which is going to be through the glacier, or we can go through this kind of relatively easy pass, which is going to take longer. Mm, I don't much like either option, honestly. Uh, let's take the longer and easier Harad base, and it'll be important to conserve our energy. You're to travel to Achaea by sledge, uh, or sled. Two sledges have been loaded with enough food and equipment for the mission, each drawn by a team of six Kanu dogs. This sturdy breed is native to Calte and make ideal sledge dogs. Their thick, tawny coats and powerful chests, as well as their renowned vigor and enthusiasm, make them well-suited to the harsh work ahead. Your three guides, Irian, Fenor, and Dice, are all experienced trappers. They're skilled at survival in this icy desert, and have experienced its many unseen dangers. 
Once the dogs are in harnesses, you and Irian climb aboard your sledge and signal for the others to lead the way. Staring across the frozen expanse of the Leduc ice shelf, you see the white glare of the rod basin edge. Ice blink, they call it, says Irian, his eyes glinting from deep inside the hood of his fur jacket. It's the reflection of the ice shelf. It's no more than four miles away at most, but it's nearer forty than four. The air of Calte can be very deceptive. The weather is bright and windless as you make excellent progress on the first day. As darkness sets in, you decide to set up camp for the night. The sledges are drawn together and the tent is erected in the salient away from the wind. We do possess the Kai discipline of sixth sense, so we shall turn to thirty-five. You get an uneasy feeling that someone or something is watching you. You leave the tent and peer into the night for some sign of life, but the snow and the darkness hide everything. Reluctantly, you return to the tent and go to sleep, but with one hand by your weapon in case of a surprise attack. When you awake, you sense that something has changed. It takes nearly a minute to realize that the incessant howling of the night winds has ceased. It's a beautiful morning, says Irian, cheerfully, his head appearing through the tent flap. You quickly climb out of your sleeping furs and stare out over the icy landscape. The Calte air is fresh and clear. You see a strong mirage in the distance that seems to throw the land up much higher than it could possibly be. We should make it to the rock by nightfall, says Fenor, as he busily pulls a reluctant canoe dog into its harness. Best to make camp there tonight. The shelter's good this far from sea. Oh, the shelter's good. And this far from sea, a blizzard can whip across the shelf from nowhere in a few minutes. I've known trappers to be blown for miles if they're careless or unlucky enough to be caught out on the shelf with no cover. That day, the canoe dogs pull, pull strong and true, for the going is smooth across the ice shelf. By nightfall, you've reached the rock, a splinter of granite that has thrust through the ice shelf. Its curious shape reminds you of the King's Citadel in Holmgard. You make camp to the leeward side of the rock to avoid the worst of the night winds. So, we've made it here. Okay, pick a number. Blah. Zero. Okay. The following day, a strong wind rises from the north. Hour upon hour, it blows relentlessly in your face. The Lejuk ice shelf becomes a mass of twisted slabs of ice, jutting upwards at every angle. The process is slow and difficult. By midday, you're shivering with cold, your lips are cracked and bleeding, and the icy blasts have covered you in a thin film of snow. That looks bad. You steer your sledge through a narrow passage at the edge of the ice shelf, where it meets the Harad Basin. Here you're sheltered from the wind, and for the first time today you can see ahead quite clearly. Suddenly, shrieks from above warn you that you're not the only creature seeking shelter here. Within seconds, three large Bacnar jump from the ice wall and land with a crash on the sledges. Your fellow driver, Irian, is thrown against the ice and the collapse is unconscious. You're prevented from going to his aid by a hungry, carnivorous Bacnar. There is no hope of evading it, and you must fight it to the death. No, oh, I meant to... Boop. Okay, back Nar. That'd be the. Uh, oh, what are the things called in uh, Empire Strikes Back? Uh, or a Wendigo, Sasquatch, Grizzly Bear with Horns, whatever. It's that thing. They're a little gnarly. Yep. And Arian got messed up. Okay, so we've got enemy combat skill 19. Enemy endurance points 30. My combat skill is 29, because it's not immune to mind blast. And it takes 12. Then it takes 8. Ow, I keep getting hurt. And then it's dead. Or the three of them are dead, rather. Or this particular one. I have won the combat. The heavy beast rolls off the sledge and lies motionless on the ice. Fenor has managed to light a torch and is thrusting the flaming brand at the other two Bagnar. They are terrified by the fire and quickly turn and flee. You cheer as they disappear and then turn to congratulate your brave guides, but are stunned to see that they've already started to skin the dead Bagnar. You watch with disgust as Dice opens the beast up from throat to belly with his sharp hunting knife. He quickly pulls back the white fur and scoops out handfuls of thick oil from underneath the skin. The smell of the oil is horrible. So horrible, in fact, that even the Kanu dogs bury their noses in the snow to avoid it. You can't believe your eyes when the two guides start to rub this vile oil all over their faces and inside their clothes. You're a sick man, Dice. Bacnar oil, shouts Fenor enthusiastically. 
Nothing like it for keeping warm and dry. He pulls his hand from the dead beast and offers you a fistful of the putrid jelly.